So we got all 48 gigs of RAM working, we have our two Xeon CPUs, and I have the blue LED. So then what are we waiting for? It's finally time to benchmark the beast. Welcome back to CompTV, a place you can go for all things tech. I'm Lee, and this is the third, well technically fourth, and final installment of my dual Xeon workstation PC build that I call Gladiator. Just in case you missed the first few, I'll go ahead and leave the links in the description below, but here are the specs as a quick recap. I have two Intel 5650 6 core server processors. The motherboard which will be holding all this madness is the Supermicro X8 DTIF and will be sporting 40 gigs of registered ECC DDR3 at 1333 MHz. Also, I'll be using some Hyper 212s to cool down the CPUs, even though this motherboard doesn't support overclocking. To power this all, I have a 750 watt EVGA 80 plus bronze rated power supply. Also, to make sure we had room for gaming, I included a GeForce GTX 1060. Finally, the reason why the build is named Gladiator, the Ultra Gladiator. That build that you just saw, which is right here, has been waiting for weeks and weeks to be benchmarked, and today is the day. For a quick overview of what we're going to do, we're going to start off with the synthetic benchmarks and then we're going to switch over to OBS and a face cam view where I'll do the live benchmarking so that you can see the FPS in real time. My software of choice, NZXT Cam, which you can see in the top left corner of this video here, will take the min, max, and average of the FPS while I'm playing again in real time. Unfortunately, the software didn't work in every situation, so we used fraps in the background in order to track the FPS as a backup. Now you might be wondering. Isn't having OBS running in the background going to affect the final performance of the benchmarks? And my answer to that is probably not. Since we have so many CPU cores and gigs of RAM available, I think what we'll find is that it'll run in the background silently and we won't even be able to tell it's recording. But just in case, I'll run another benchmark without OBS running and I'll let you know in the conclusion of this video how that turns out. Now, without further ado, let's get into the synthetic benchmarks. I started off with the fan favorite Fire Strike, getting a score of 11,167. Now this is with the standard version, and I actually bought the full version, which I'll be using from this point on, so let's check out the Fire Strike Extreme in 1080. Normally the Fire Strike Extreme score runs in 4K, but when bringing it to 1080, I still saw that it attacks my hardware a little bit more, giving me a score of 5908. Following up with the DirectX 12 version of this benchmark, 3D Mark Time Spy, I got a score of 4375. And just for fun, I decided to run the VR benchmark that comes with this software suite, known as VR Mark. And that gave us a score of 5681, and as a reference, that score fell in between the high-end PC and VR Ready PC scores that are provided by the website, which basically means this PC is VR Ready. Now which Cinebench, one of the scores I was most hyped for, let's go ahead and see that in real time. Ooh, that feels so good to watch. Again, as a reference, this 1267 score falls similar to the 4th gen of i7s, which is great noting that these x5650s are actually more like 1st gen i7s. I also ran Unigen Heaven at the highest possible settings for 1080p and got a score of 1619. Now, in-game benchmarks. Alright, so for starters, we're going to be playing my current favorite game, which is Rocket League. And if you want to know what my favorite game of all time is, you're going to have to wait for a Q&A video, but look forward to that in the near future. So let's get started. And like I said, if you look in the top left, eventually you'll see the benchmark pop up, which I'm going to try doing at the most action packed section of the game. You better not beat me, dude. Alright, here we go. Starting now. Oh, I'm going to get wrecked by this bot as the game progresses. Oh, can I make the save? No, I can't. I'm awful. Oh, I have easy save. I'm terrible at this game. Man, he made out like a bandit. Okay, sorry. I won't I won't make any more jokes like that. That was pretty awful. Oh, man, he stole that from me.
Alright guys, so as you can see, the final min-max and average for this game is about 132 for the minimum, 212 for the maximum, and around 175 to 180 for the average. Which, of course, is way overkill because my refresh rate of my monitor is only 60 hertz, but it gives you an accurate view of how powerful the system is. And just because I forgot to mention, I'm going to be playing every game on ultra settings. This game is absolutely maxed out, which I can show you here. And so everything's turned on. It has the highest anti-aliasing and I have everything on high quality. So that's what I'll be doing for every game. And I'm going to max out the FPS if possible so that I don't get any V-Sync or anything minimizing it to 60. So let's get on with the next game. For this next game, we have City Skylines, which is pretty exciting for me because this is going to be a CPU intensive game. And as we all know, there is quite a bit few cores on this system. So I'm pretty sure Gladiator is going to slaughter these benchmarks. I'm pretty sure Gladiator is going to slaughter these benchmarks. But just to show you again, we're going to be utilizing all of the hardwares because we have all the quality settings set to max again this isn't the newest game but it should do fairly well and it should be fun to watch so i actually found a los santos los santos i don't know how to say that a gta 5 map that i've actually seen other people use i just wanted something really crowded and i'm not good enough at this game to know how to make a city yet so i'm just going to go ahead and use this let's see how the game performs what i'm going to do is i'm going to start out just on a zoomed out view and then zoom in and then let's see how it taxes our system System. So let's start the benchmark. All right, there we go. So we're starting out. We got a min, max, and average of around 30s. So <laughs> this actually is doing quite a number. I spoke too soon. It's only using, it looks like, around two of my cores. So that is clearly the bottleneck here. And as you can see, my max turbo speed of these cores is right around three gigahertz. So 2.9 megahertz. Just for fun, let's go ahead and turn down some of the settings. I'm really, really surprised by these benchmarks. I'm pretty sure Gladiator's gonna slaughter these benchmarks. So I'm just gonna go ahead and call this a wash. I'm getting a minimum of about 14 frames per second, a max of 65 zoomed all the way out and at the lowest settings, and an average of around 30, which I think is fair given even max settings. I'm getting an average of around 30 frames per second. All right, let's get to the next benchmark. All right, so for the next game we're going to be playing, we're going to be playing H1Z1. And as you can see, again, I set the preset to ultra setting. All right, so we're flying from the sky. Let's go ahead and enable that overlay, and let's see what kind of frames we can get. All right, I'm pretty sure I just turned it on, but let's see, just in case. Oh no, is this another one of those games that doesn't support the overlay? Ooh, wow, yeah, I'm noticing some definite stuttering and glitchiness here. I'm guessing it's mostly the shadows and just all the filtering from the trees and the leaves and stuff, but yeah, definitely some stutters going on here. Ooh, I wonder what he's got there. It looks like it might be an old Pentium system, probably a Dell, but you know, who knows? I'll probably junk that. If you could find that, you'll probably slap a decent GPU in there and play maybe, you know, Minesweeper or, you know, at least Solitaire. It should be a pretty solid system down there. Yeah, I'm thinking of submitting my setup to Ed from TechSource, so you all hit him up if you can. Maybe uh, let him know. Let him know about my channel. Kind of expose me a little bit. I definitely think, you know, look at There's no cables. I mean, these are my toys and my ponies and stuff, but, you know, ignore that. Actually, that's a line. Sorry. But yeah, like, as you can see, the cable management's pretty good. I'm thinking about putting some LEDs in the back and then, you know, adding maybe another two monitors to either side. So let me know what you think. This is where all my ideas are, you know. Yeah, I actually think that's gonna do it for this benchmark. Um, I actually have it pulled up and this game actually performed a little bit better than I thought. It has a minimum of about 30 frames per second, a max of 63 and an average of around 52 frames per second. So all in all, not too bad. Most of the benchmark took place in the trees. So I think that's the worst case scenario. All right, so for this benchmark, we're gonna go ahead and play Overwatch. And as you can see, again, we have this set to ultra settings, which in this case is called Epic settings. So I guess that's the same thing. Let's go ahead and find a game and get into the benchmark. All right, let's see if we can win this thing. I'm awful at this game. I just got it recently, so, well. And if you didn't think I was bad, that's how quickly I can lose a game. So let's get into the game. I'll go ahead and show you the part where I hit the record button. These rounds go a little too long for me to include too much of this because it just make the video too long. So like I said, I'll show you right when I hit record and we'll see how the performance is. All right, so this is pretty hectic. I'm gonna go ahead and start the benchmark now. All right, let's go. I don't see any FPS counters, of course, because like I said, it doesn't support overlays. Okay, I picked a great time. <laughs> I just got wrecked. All right, let's see. This shouldn't take long. Oh. Oh, let's break it. Boom. Oh, that's so epic. Mm. 
That was sad. So we got wrecked. All in all, the final min, max, and average were 73 for the minimum, 118 for the maximum, and 88 frames per second for the average. So 88 frames average with completely max settings and with having all this processing power is to be expected because I do have a 1060 in here. So Overwatch, again, isn't a super hardware intensive game. And if you drop down the settings, honestly, in my opinion, it still looks pretty good. So I think this is what we could have expected from it. I'm going to go ahead and get to the next game. All right, so for this next game, we're going to be playing Shadow of Mordor. And this is a little bit of an older game, but the quality is amazing. And you'll see as we play, I'm in the middle of a big fight and the FPS is already running. So let's see how we do. Oh, what am I supposed to do? I don't know. Oh, I see. Wowza. Wow. This is, I'm actually a little bit scared right here. You know what? How about we do a really cool tactic? Oh, you know what? Oh, I got wrecked. You died so easy. Could have killed you a long time ago. All right, so it's looking like we have a max of about 100 frames per second, a min of around 70, an average around 78, which I think personally is a great score. I'm super happy with it. Again, this isn't the newest type of game, but as you can see, it's pretty graphic, graphic intensive, and we're on the most epic of settings. Wait, no, epic. That was Overwatch. I think that's good enough for this game. Let's go ahead and get to the next one. And for the last benchmark of the day, I wanted to go with the AAA title that I own. I think it might be the only AAA title that I own, and I actually don't own it. This is... This is a demo. And as you can see, all the settings are set up to the max. They're all set to ultra. I'm using the ultra preset and I'm gonna go ahead and I don't know if I saved it, so I'm gonna save it now. Wow, the graphics in this game are amazing. Wow, looks so good. Say it, don't spray it, bro. This was a little too smooth, so I'm going to check, and I think, yes, the vertical sync is on. So if you're benchmarking anything, make sure to turn that off because that will actually change the final results because sometimes I can lock it at 60. All right, here we go. As soon as I rip this open, I'm going to hit the benchmark button. Let's do this. Fight me. Wow, this is bloody. I did not ask my parents if I could play this before I started playing this. If you are under the age of 12, look away. This is, wow, that is brutal. So that was fun, and based on the results that I have here, I got a minimum of 56 frames per second, a maximum of 109, and an average of 79 frames per second, which was awesome, again, especially compared to City Skylines. Yeah, it performed really well, and again, I think that's just because it's relying more heavily on the GPU than the CPU, but all right, there you go. I hope you enjoyed those benchmarks, and let me know in the comments again what you thought about the format. And last but not least, here's the rendering performance of this Dual Xeon workstation. Here you can see DaVinci Resolve successfully utilizes all 24 cores, rendering this 5 minute and 43 second video in approximately 3 minutes and 34 seconds. Thus giving this machine the capability of rendering about 1.4 minutes of video per minute. And that's 1080p at 24 frames per second. And that pretty much wraps it up. Let me know in the comments if those were the scores that you expected. As a quick note, when I turned off OBS, the FPS differences were actually negligible if not non-existent. You heard it right, OBS practically didn't affect performance at all. Even running City Skylines a second time without OBS on and all the encoding involved with recording the screen, it still performed the same. That's right, the game that I thought Gladiator would destroy, destroyed Gladiator. On a further note, I'm actually going to explore the bottlenecking of a GPU and CPU in a further video, so stay tuned for that as well. Even though I know this PC isn't the best, it is the most powerful one I've owned, so feel free to post your own scores in the comment section below so that I can compare them to mine and we can chat it out in the comments. Now earlier in this video, I mentioned that I was using NZXT Cam. This software is great for monitoring the temperatures and the performance and also the load of your CPU and GPU as well as the rest of your hardware in your system. This software might appear a little bit foreign to you and in fact, I'm actually going to make a video in order to introduce you to it and to compare it to the more well-known MSI Afterburner. And herein lies the announcement. This video is actually not going to be posted on my channel, but on the channel of the man himself, Nerd on a Budget. Danny has invited me to post one of my own videos on his channel while he's away on vacation, so I'm super excited and stoked and humbled by the opportunity to do that. Most of you probably already know him, but if you don't, feel free to go check out his channel now and subscribe. Trust me, it is well worth it. Again, leave a comment below if you have any thoughts and give this video a like if you enjoyed it. 
Go ahead and subscribe if you like this content and you'd like to see more like it. And just in case you didn't know, I'm Lee from CompTV. Oh, I get it. It's try again because it says I'm the winner and usually it says that when you're the loser. I'm a loser. <laughs>